Hey Spartans, Mrs. May here, and today's activity involves a little bit of prep in advance. Uh, I'm going to share with you some equipment that I think you'll need to complete this. Um, I'm honestly just being resourceful and using things around my house, so there's a lot of different ways you could probably make this work even if you don't have all the equipment. Now if you try to gather all the equipment and you just can't make it happen, that's okay. Uh, these two pre-tests are just for fun to uh, see how well you can complete the tests. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to do two pre-tests, the vertical jump and the horizontal jump, which we call a broad jump. So two different jump types. The reason we're doing this is because we're going to do a hand-eye coordination test that scientifically has been proven uh, to improve your vertical jump height along with other tests. So by doing a pre-test before the hand-eye coordination uh, training, we'll really get to see if it scientifically does really improve our performances. Okay, um, you can do a variety of other tests as well. You could do some hand-eye coordination um, with like a piece of paper, or a tennis ball, if you have a tennis racket or a ping pong ball and a you know, table tennis racket, you could say, how many times you can hit it over and over and over again. You can do front hand, you can do the back hand, front of the racket, back of the racket, stuff like that. Um, but I like the jumps, so we're gonna give that a try. So what you'll need today is if you have somebody to help you, awesome. But if not, you'll just have to put in a little bit more work to get your measurements accurately. Um, if you have a ladder for the vertical jump, that will probably be easier, especially if you're like me and you're a little bit taller, because once you get beyond like six feet, uh, I don't have much more reach. So I'm going to grab my house ladder. Um, if you don't have a ladder, you could do it on a chair. Just make sure you are safe and that you aren't getting a wobbly chair. So I don't want you to get injured just for a vertical jump test, okay? Um, but you'll need something to stand on that's stable, ladder. Uh, if you have a chalk from like weightlifting or if you have chalk at home, you could also kind of just on the pavement wear it down a little bit and then collect all that powder and use that for your vertical jump. But today, because I don't have any chalk at my house, I'm going to simply use painter's tape, which sorry, is kind of hard to see outside my shoulder. Um, it says you only need two pieces, but since we're going to do the test three times, we're going to have a strip that we break down into six pieces like that. All right, so you kind of have a before point. I guess you'd only need four technically because you have your starting point and then your three attempts. Uh, you're gonna need some measuring tape. Uh, if you have the kind that's loose um, instead of this stuff and can stretch really long, that's awesome. Um, if you know that you could broad jump further than 12 feet, just make sure you check the distance on yours. So I happen to know I cannot do a broad jump uh, beyond 12 feet. So this tape measure will work just fine. And then to measure your broad jump, you're gonna need a starting marker. So I'm just gonna use a pencil. I'm gonna stick it in the grass, okay? And then I'm gonna perform my jump without running, okay, it's a broad jump, so we're just gonna stand in place and jump. And then I'll put my next marker and we'll see for three attempts how many we got there. So four pieces of tape, four pencils, uh, measuring tape, something to stand on, and a friend if you have one nearby. That's what you'll need today. So let's go ahead and go learn how to do these two jumps, get your pre-tests in, and then we'll teach you how to do the line trick um, for hand-eye coordination with our video. Spartans, Mrs. May here, and we're going to go ahead and get ready for our vertical jump test. As you can see, my location has changed. I am outside. You can definitely do this inside. Um, I just find it easier to do outside, even though I don't have anybody who lives below me. So um, definitely utilize painter's tape or chalk. I would not use clear tape or masking tape just because they, they don't come off the walls really easy. So especially if you don't own your home, you really don't want to do any damage. So again, let's get started with our vertical jump test. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Sorry, we live right by the interstate, so lots of noise. I have my ladder. Um, again, you can use a box that's sturdy or a chair that's sturdy to measure your height. Uh, for this example right here, I'm just going to show you facing you, but I'm actually going to face away for the actual test because I am left-hand dominant. But if you're right-handed, you're going to step 
right up next to the wall. Grab one of your pieces of tape, or this is the point where you chalk up your hands, okay? And I'm gonna put my fingertips right at the edge of the tape so that the highest point I can reach is the highest point where the tape is, okay? And semi-relaxed, I'm not overstretching, okay? I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna stand here, casually reach, place that one first marker piece of tape, and that is how, that's our, our zero point. And then again, you're not gonna take a step forward or back. It's like our broad jump. You're gonna do it directly from one spot, no assistance. All we're gonna do is go into a squat jump position. So squat down, load our feet, so rocking heel up to toes, and you're gonna jump as high as you can using your arms to assist. Make sure you have your piece of tape <laughs> for that first jump right at the edge of your fingers again. Um, Based on how you fall, you might take a little practice jump and see how you line up there so you can take a little half step backwards. Squat down, jump up, and you're gonna place the tape as high as you can. So, because trick for you, <laughs> fold the bottom of the tape in so you're not holding the sticky part and still line it up with the edge, top edge of your fingers there. So this thumb is right by the part that's folded up so it's no longer sticky. That should help you. Release your tape. There it goes. Piece number one. We're gonna do this three times. Again, we're gonna fold part of the tape, fairly big piece of tape so that it's not stuck to our hand when we make our jump. Load. Oh, explode. Yes. A little bit higher than that one. That was good. Third piece, maybe. There we go. Okay, roll up just a little bit of it. Nothing's not gonna stick. Line it up with the top of our finger. Look, explode, woo! Then we're going to do our measuring with our measuring tape. Go ahead and move your pencils, any other tools out of the way. And take this time to go ahead and measure how, what your highest jump was. Uh, I also recommend maybe if you have some spare tape so you don't forget the numbers, you can either take a piece of paper up there with you. When we do this at track practice, uh, we have coaches with a clipboard so you really don't have to stress or worry about forgetting your measurements because they'll do that for you yeah, a pen would be helpful or a sharpie right now I'll just take my piece of tape but we'll go pencil tape carefully measure okay measuring tape so your zero point the top part of that piece of tape is going to be the zero you'll just lock your tape measure there and up to the top part of the other tape because we went fingertip to the highest point that you can jump. Again, make sure your ladder or whatever you're stepping on isn't on a hole or anything. So here's my zero. Apparently I'm gonna need more than nine inches. That's always nice. Woo. Stabilize, hold that in place. There's my zero. So you can write down all three, or you can just write your highest jump. Up to you. I am gonna write down all three so that I can have that little like variety. Really cool, guys. So. Um, at that point, uh, we still have to do our hand-eye coordination. So you could, if that's all the tape you had, just leave your highest one up there and then take the other two down. Your height here is never gonna change, so just leave that piece. Then like save these for later. Boop, boop, boop. My highest point's right there. So I have my zero still and my highest jump. And then if you end up hitting your roof, 
then you just need to find the new area. So I've got probably six more inches, so I should be fine. Unless that hand-eye coordination uh, task improves my jump by six inches. Next up, let's go ahead and do a horizontal jump. Hey Spartans, time for our horizontal jump test. So you'll need your measuring tape, which you can set off to the side for right now. Remember to go longer than 12 feet if you can go further than 12 feet. Also highly recommend if you have a dog that you clean up your yard, move all that dog poop regularly. So I will be jumping the short end of our yard today because I did not clean up dog poop. So if I go that way, no matter where I jump, I land in dog poop. Okay, you need your four pencils. Okay, uh, the first one is your zero point. So it's where your toes will line up behind every time. Mine is this gold pencil right here. Okay, you can go ahead and take a little practice jump. You don't need a pencil in hand for that one. And just see how far you casually jump. Okay, remember every time you land to keep your feet planted unless you're with somebody or if you're in a sand pit that's even better so at the track we just let you guys fall forward um, and then we measure wherever the dip is in the sand but if you don't have sand you do this you can also do this indoors um, I just like to do it outdoors because I don't have to worry about big thuds or anything so I'm out in the grass it's really great because I can just stick a pencil in the ground that I don't like and we can do that okay so first jump Grab my pencil, I'm going to have my feet just outside hip width, and I'm just going to load, swing my arms, and go for it. Okay, now look for your heel that is the furthest back, and you're going to place the pencil there outside, okay, and mark it there. This is this is take two, so I've already beat that one. I'm not gonna count that one, okay? Um, and then just walk backwards. Pick up your next pencil. See if we can match number two there. Load. Load. There was jump number two. Put that pencil in there. I'm back both off to the side so that I don't have to worry. Hopefully, I did not run out of juice. Third pencil. Let's see if we can make it our furthest jump yet. Oh no! Sad. So in long jump, if you fall backwards, you measure to that point where your hand fell back, but this is just a test for broad jump. So at home today, if you fall backwards and your feet stay planted, just mark the furthest heel backwards. Make sure your feet land securely though, and you're not trying to inch them forward. So this is a pre-test, so sometimes a slightly lower score is okay. But you're just testing against yourself, so let's go ahead and grab our measuring tape. This is where if you have somebody nearby to help, it'll be great. If not, these measuring tapes um, have a great little system where you can lock it in place and it doesn't move. If you have the fabric-y style measuring tapes, I would just weigh it down with something. So if you had your painter's tape roll, I would just zero out at the pencil, lay down your even your ladder, something heavy, just to hold it while you pull away. So that way it doesn't shift on you. So I'm gonna go grab my piece of tape, something to write with. Again, when we're at track practice, we have a coach that has a clipboard. So they're taking all your measurements. We also have people that are measuring. So um, you don't really need to worry about this. But while you're at home, you can have a piece of paper on the side, measuring both jumps or you just stick a piece of tape to you. I'm gonna mark my zero with flour so I can uh, actually write it down and weigh it down at the same time. All right. Okay. On my first jump, line it up right up against that tough surface. So push it against your heavy object that's lined up at your zero. Put your fingers down to hold it. Now you don't need to worry about the zero. And we're going to the nearest half inch. So four feet. 
the world. Okay, so let's just go by inches. So we're at 54 and a half. By holding with my non-dominant hand, now I can just write and I don't have to reset. 54.5, which is just over four feet. The next one is 57, was my second jump before I realized that uh, I had to hit record on my computer. Hey, and this one's really cool, 64 inches exactly for our third jump. So is that? Five feet, four inches. It's not all that impressive when you get older. So hopefully you guys are getting uh, much more impressive jumps. If not, that's okay. This is just our starting point. Next up, we're gonna go in. We're going to practice our reaction time uh, video, okay? So the next thing you'll need is a piece of paper, something to write with. Make sure you clean up all your other supplies. Um, if you want, actually, since you're going to retest after the reaction test, if you want to leave these out, if it's a nice day, go for it. Um, I know that pencils in the grass isn't going to bug anybody in my household, so I'm going to leave those out. Um, same with the painter's tape on the side of the wall. When it rains, it's not going to stick uh, to the wall, so it'll still come off. So I'm going to go ahead and leave all my items out here. And um, I would just leave your best jumps. So your highest vertical jump tape and your furthest horizontal jump. All right, switch pencils, so I like that one better. Take our flower pot back. And let's go inside. Uh, you're still going to need your measuring tape. Oh no, dog poop. Check your lawn for dog poop before you start your horizontal jump. Ugh. No. Ugh. So much mud and poop. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop this video.